Well, when we first met, uh, we were playing this little club outside of town. Uh, Marky's band was opening up for uh, this artist I was working with. So I hung around and I, I checked out the, uh, the opening act. And uh, they sounded good, but I especially liked what Marky was bringing to the table. Well, when I first met Rick Latina and uh, we talked about working together, um, I went to uh, one of his gigs and I sat in. All of his cats were these tour guys who have been out with everybody and their uncle, so I was hooked. <laughs> yeah, heck yeah, I'll come play with y'all. But we sat down together for the first time, and everything just flowed so easily. The, the lyrics, the music, uh, the whole group, since we are a band, everybody had input, and uh, it was just amazing how easily things came out. Yeah, it was a natural thing, just, uh, hey, I get this idea, hey, you know. Oh yeah, I got some vocal ideas, go home the next day, have some lyrics, get together, put it together, and probably a few days later, you always go to the studio. Well, we actually started writing as more of a rock blues kind of a project with uh, Ain't No Angel. But then as things progressed, we started uh, changing things up a little bit. Yeah, not for any reason. We just kind of uh, started writing. We had these other two songs in the can that were kind of blues rock kind of things. And then we started writing a little bit, and uh, some other influences came into play. And then some out blues kind of stuff. Some old traditional blues and some little stack stuff, and it's just a culmination. So we found ourselves basically gravitating back towards the kind of music that we grew up on, all that great old soul, but yet still keeping a foot in the blues world. But then adding a little new indie rock, um, this CD actually crosses over three different genres. So we think we have a little bit of something in there for everybody. And just throw a bunch of stuff in the pot. And, <laughs> and we found our sound. Then it came to sweetening up the tracks a little bit. We, we laid the tracks down, we had a great feel, and we, we loved everything we had down. We go, something, then, something was missing. We thought about, then we thought about, well, let's try some horns. And then <laughs> uh, you've been talking to Anson. Yeah, Anson Thunderberg, a multi award winning guitar player. He said if you put them on and they take the songs to the next level, then keep them. If they don't do anything, get rid of them. So we tried the horns on one song. And they did something. And that is it. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't know how to like, do horn parts. We didn't know how to write horn parts. But let me tell you, about, about halfway through this project, no, two songs. <laughs> we can write <laughs> horn yeah. parts. <laughs> yeah. We had horn, horn ideas. And now, sometimes when we write right now, we'll actually uh, start adding, yeah, adding, adding the horn, horn parts. Yeah, zeroing the horn parts. <laughs> see if they were too. So it's, uh, <laughs> Marky was one of the first people I met when I moved to Nashville and we were friends for months before we found out that we're both songwriters. So we started writing together, we wrote a lot of songs together. So I came up with this idea for a song. I had like the first verse and chorus, the first line was uh, you can be strong for only so long. And that, that sort of reminded me of Bill Withers' Lean On Me. Uh, but the feel that I, of the music that I had in my head was more, I'd rather go blind. And James. Right. Just records. So I thought, well, Marky Blue, come on, these are the people I need to take it to. <laughs> and then you took it somewhere else entirely. He, yeah, he brought it to us, <laughs> and uh, we kind of added the, the feel not really consciously, but uh, instead of singing words on the chorus, do a little bit more of that Smokey Robinson from Ooh Baby Baby. And then on the, the solo, this one, it just reminds me of the Commodores, that Larry Carlton guitar. Oh, that, that song is like butter. Writing with these guys is like you see here. She starts laughing. <laughs> like that, and it just becomes more fun than you can imagine. Bill and I had written together for a, quite a, a few years, and then uh, when I started uh, playing with Rick, uh, Bill had said, 
Finally, this is what we've been looking for. But uh, we, we do have a couple special guests on the CD. One of them is uh, former Almond Brother Jack Pearson. He was playing with Dickie Betts uh, with the Almond Brothers during the 90s with Eric Clapton. But uh, Jack and I wrote one of the songs, Play Me, and then it was a whole different kind of feel. So then Rick and I got a hold of it and did it our way and uh, added that whole Stax sound to it. And then another one of our songs that was co-written uh, out of the blue got picked up for a movie. So here we are, we've got a CD that hadn't even been released yet and we already had a song that was in a movie. And we just found out that we just uh, debuted on uh, Blue's debut chart <laughs> number three. <laughs> That's amazing. No, we did use it 10. Oh, jumped. David, and yeah. jumped to number three, jumped but it's, number it's three. called the David Blues Charts. It's our first chart, y'all. <laughs> so anyway, we had Steve Cropper. I'm sure everybody knows who Steve Cropper is. He's a legend, yeah. legendary Stax recording artist, Grammy winner. Right. Um, Sitting on the Dr. Yeah. Yeah. Midnight Hour. <laughs> Midnight Hour, that. soul man. So, so we got a chance to open yeah. for him a couple times. Oh, that's right, yeah. And he actually stopped his first show to talk about Marky Blue and he was like, that band is actually writing the songs that I would be writing today. And we thought that was pretty cool. And not only did he write our liner notes, he, he picked the order of the CD. He's like, I think you guys have this wrong. You need to do it like this. So we immediately changed it. A few days later, in, mid, in the middle of the night, we get an email from him saying, I can't get this song of yours out of my head. I immediately emailed all the guys. Holy cow, our hero is, is sitting around listening to us, but something needs to be fixed. Uh, well, I think we can beat the vocal. Long story short, he, he brought us into the studio and he produced the vocal on the very last song, Baby I'm Crying, it's on, on our CD. So Steve Cropper came in and produced it for us. With the original Stax microphone, I might add. Yes, he brought in. The U87 from the original. From the original Stax uh, records. Just an amazing, a, a absolutely amazing opportunity.